People who work at remote places like forest officers, oil rig workers, etc. What creepy things have you noticed while at work? Part 5. Please make sure you share and subscribe. Our channel thread tonic. Account 1. I don't work out in the woods or anything, but me and my dad were hunting in the Porcinos. So me and my dad were sitting in a hunting tower. It was cold as balls out. And we start hearing what sounded like one of those old religious chants, where they sing all together in Latin while walking in a straight line. It kept getting closer, till we saw movement ab 20 meters ahead, and then we saw a group of ab 10 to 30 people wearing all white holding candles, and then ab 5 more people with rifles and shotguns standing in the front, the back, and on the sides. We let them pass, and they were staring at us as they walked by. It was scary as all hell. Apt ten mins. After they walked by, we went over to where they were standing, and it was snowy out there, and there were zero footsteps in the snow, until this day we still don't know what the hell we saw that day. Account 2. I'm in the Navy and work on aircraft carriers. A girl sadly hung herself in one of the spaces right near where me and my shop slept. One person swore he saw her sitting in the chair as he was getting undressed one day and ran screaming out of the berthing. I waited about a week to go into the space where she hung herself, and when I did, I heard the loudest screeching noise I had ever heard in my life. I quickly turned around and got the fuck out of there. The system connected to where she slept didn't work at all for the next two weeks or so, too. The systems break a lot, so it was pretty coincidental that it happened just as she did this. Account 3. I spent a significant amount of time in the woods, and finding a body was also my biggest fear until my brother said, well, better that someone finds them, right? So as much as I still hope I never find a body, that is a more positive way of approaching it. At least the person would be found, hopefully identified, and maybe their family or friends would get some closure, etc. Account 4. Not work-related, but while I was living in rural Australia, I went to a swimming hole with some friends. You have to walk down a rainforest trail from the road for about 20 minutes to get to the swimming hole. There were no other cars parked near the trail when we got there, and we didn't see anyone else the entire time we were swimming. Anyway, we were there in the late afternoon and the sun was starting to go down, so we make our way back to where we parked our car. It gets dark by the time we make it to the road and we have out phones out as flashlights. Parked right next to our car is an old camper van. Lights are off and the side door is wide open with no one inside. There's no one around we can see, so we're kind of spooked and quickly get in our car and start driving. We get down the road a little bit and see headlights behind us. The road ends near the swimming hole, so it must be the camper van following us. Thankfully, the lights turned down a side road before we got to the highway and we didn't see them again. Still wanted to check the car boot when we got home. Account 5. I do go hunting kinda north in Canada, and the thing is, where I hunt for deer there are plenty of wolves, bears, and the sorts, so I stay in a cabin up there. You aren't always on your toes, but you want to bring a rifle with you to go anywhere, even if you don't plan on shooting anything, so it's like 5 a.m., and I'm on the four-wheeler I'm freezing weather to get to my tree stand before dawn hits, and I swear to God I keep hearing crashing through the bushes. I dismiss it for probably being ice cracking the branches from last night's snow, but creepy, nonetheless. As I reached my stand, I climb up and settle for the morning. I get a pretty nice view of a field that was cleared out, and there is an old, burned-out cottage on the opposite end of the clearing. As the sun rises behind my stand, the morning is very still, just the occasional branch falling down through the forest. Day really passed without any ammo being spent and a get out of my tree stand. And decide maybe I should go look at the burned down cabin. I've never bothered checking it. And looking at it all day got me curious enough to go check it out. There wasn't a cleared trail, obviously, so I'd have to go it on foot. I unloaded my rifle and went for a long walk. Around a good ten men later, I started to get close and could see some old farm equipment. Which made sense. A field in the middle of the forest was probably cleared so a farmer could do what he wants with it. I come close to the doorway, only really able to hear the crunch of snow underneath my feet. 
The doorway managed to survive whatever happened there and slid down the snow in through the doorway, careful not to touch anything. And I feel crunch under my boots that definitely isn't snow. It's the skull of a bull. I look up from the snow and there is more of them. Skulls and legs. A ridiculous amount. But the part that alarmed me is that I could see a tint of red in the snow underneath one that was still covered in skin. So I said fuck that and bolted back across the field and didn't look back. Why was someone collecting that shit in the middle of the forest? I don't have a clue and don't want to think about it. Next year I moved my stand and I never want to go back there. Weird shit happens in the forest. Account 6. I was at Large Old Cottage in the middle of the Peak District, UK, with a friend whose parents lived there but were away for the weekend. For anyone that doesn't know, it's a very barren place, full of hills, heather, and rains a lot. You don't see many people around. We'd spent the evening outside on her patio until it got dark and quite cold. So as we packing up to head indoors, her dog suddenly jumped upwards and just ran, as fast as I've ever seen it run into the field next door and into the darkness. No bark, no whining, just vanished. We called and she eventually came back. But she kept turning around and standing her ground, staring into the dark. A few minutes later, we saw these flashes coming from a patch of woods beyond the field. They looked like camera flashes, but it was too far away to tell. Twenty minutes later, we were inside and we locked the doors. A little unnerved by whatever the dog had spotted, it was late, and too late for what happened next. The house phone rang, and at that kind of time of night, you know it's never good. But my friend just froze and looked at me. I asked her if she was going to answer it, the incessant sound of it already creeping me out. She said, it only makes that noise when you've lost one of the handsets. I asked her what she meant, and she said, we have two house phones, one here and one upstairs. It makes that noise when you phone the other phone if you've lost it. It's an internal call. Nothing came of it. But I didn't sleep much that night. Account 7. Not me, but a co-worker, used to work at a piggery. She said she would always see someone in the corner of her eyes. Boards would be written up like someone was checking on her sows for her. Things cleaned up, like someone was helping her. Apparently, she thought she was going mad and described seeing a dude around. And the others said, oh yeah, we think that's Ray. He died a while back at home. All the staff had seen him, but just sort of ignored it. Account 8. I was a Comcast cable installer. I went to this very strange house. From the front, it was a very long house. Ranch, like a cigar shape. I walked in the front door into a long room with a total of seven doors, all of which were locked. The owner must have come through one of them to let me into this main big room. On the floor on the right was a large tube TV. The kind one might get for free from someone throwing it out or at a goodwill. It was sitting on the floor. No furniture in this room at all. The man said to me I was not allowed to go any further in this house, nor go into the basement to hook anything up, and that he had already hooked up the cable line in the basement up through the floor, and that all I needed to do was put in the small box and connect it. While doing this, a door opened, and there was a young boy with a very sad look on his face. His clothes were dirty, tattered, and he looked hopeless. The man quickly snapped at him to lock the door, and the boy vanished as quickly as he opened the door. Suddenly the hair on my neck stood up and it felt like this was a trafficking pedo situation. There was no signal over the cable wire, naturally, and I asked the man to get into the basement to check and he adamantly refused. I explained he would have no cable, and he said fine in an angrily tone and basically threw me out. It was super creepy. Account 9 I used to work for an IT company in the gaming industry whose office was in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by farms and forest. One day, one of the development team had come in from a walk in the forest and was visibly upset. Turns out she came across a dead fox. The thing that was concerning is that she said it was hanging from a tree and looks like it was put there on purpose. So a bit later on, a few of us went down to have a look. We came across a small clearing with the dead fox hanging there. Upon closer inspection, we realized it had been hung by its neck, with an incision from its balls to its throat and all of its insides pulled out. 
Felt pretty sick from that one. We got it down from the branch and chucked it into the bushes away from the path and clearing. Still to this day, we have no idea how or why it was in that state. Account 10. Could be one of two things. One, sick fuck tortured an animal and hung it up. Two, I had friends who owned farms who would shoot varmints early in the morning and violently field dress them a little ways out from their property, making quite a mess in the process. That would sit out all day, making quite a stank, which attracted coyotes the following night. They would wait, hidden, downwind from the gory spectacle for the coyotes, and once they showed up to eat, they would shoot them. He hated the field dressing part, but it was required to keep their farm animals safe. Foxes would kill the chickens, groundhogs would kill crops, and coyotes would kill their goats. It was a gross but effective form of recycling. Account 11. My cousin was a deep water diver, welder on offshore oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico. When working at night or working really deep, it is absolutely pitch dark. You can't see anything. That in itself is a little creepy. To add to the uneasiness, he said that sometimes he would be hit with a big swirl of water as if something very large, very close, just passed by him in the blackness. Now let's take it up another notch. Sometimes he would feel something brush up against his leg or nudge him. He said his imagination would wander and never to a good place. Totally creeped him out every time. Account 12. I don't believe in ghosts but I did see something once that I can't explain. And I have chalked it up to a trick of the brain. I used to work at a resort deep in Algonquin Park. It was basically rustic living for super rich people. It was a half hour drive to cell service and an hour drive to the nearest town. I finished my late shift at about midnight. And I was walking back to my cabin. I clearly saw an elderly man with suspenders and a plaid shirt walking by me on the path. We were not allowed to speak to the guests, unless they spoke to us first, so I didn't say anything to him. It was pretty dark, too. I turned around to make sure he was headed the right way to the guest cabins, and he had straight up disappeared. There was nowhere for him to go except into the thick woods, and if he had done that, I would have heard it. Very strange. Account 13. A buddy of mine had a mine, maintenance, job for a summer. The mine was in the middle of nowhere and deactivated at the time. He was there was just one other person, a crusty old timer, and they didn't really do anything but keep the weeds down and make sure nothing was leaking or rusting out. It was a very low-key job. Twice a month, a plane would fly in to deliver supplies. One day, about three months in, my friend was just walking along the river that ran near the site, and he heard what he swore was like a church choir and organ music in the distance. He was pretty sure that there was no settlement within a hundred miles. But nevertheless, he decided to try to find the source of the music. He wandered miles downstream following the river, but the sound never got any louder. Finally, he decided to get the F back to camp. Because he'd wandered off really far in bear-infested woods without any protection, the music faded before he got back to camp and he realized that it was such a peculiar experience he was reluctant to mention it to his co-worker, in case he thought he was crazy. The following day, he did mention it, and asked if there were was an Indian reserve or some other settlement with a church in area. His co-worker replied, No, man, nothing like that here, and I've been here ten years. Looks like you're bushwhacked. You need to get out of here. He left on the next plane. Account 14 I used to work at a summer camp. Usually the kids would go to bed by 9 p.m. at the latest, so the rest of us would just hang out around a fire or something. One night, one of the kids came to the fire pit, which was about 100 yards from the cabin, saying that she was having trouble sleeping because of the noise. So I walk back with her and make sure everything is good in the cabin and come back and tell everybody to keep it down. Maybe 10 minutes later, she comes back and says that she still can't fall asleep. I walk back with her again, and in my head I'm thinking that she's just being restless because we aren't being loud. But anyways, I make sure she's under covers and head back to the fire pit. Just as I'm about to get there, I realize that I left my walkie-talkie in her room, so I head back and see that she's sitting upright in bed with the walkie-talkie in her hand. I'm thinking, okay, whatever, and tell her to go to sleep. I head back to the fire pit and the guys are like, 
Why did you say that to her? And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, we heard you on the walkie-talkie tell her that she would look better if she shaved her head, that all little girls look better with shaved heads. I never said that, and nobody believed me. And it was obviously not her saying it either, since it was a grown man's voice. I rushed back to check on the cabin, and everything was normal. Account 15. I work in a restaurant that has a heavily wooded country park next to it. I used to live the other side of it and would drive around it to get to work. One particular day, I had car issues and had to walk to work, going through the woods as it's a 20-minute journey rather than an hour around. Anyway, no issues. Get to work, do my shift, finish just before midnight. I'd planned to walk home the long way, but one of the girls who worked there lived near me and said she was just going to walk through the woods as it was quicker, so I thought, fuck it. Can't be that bad. I'll walk with her then. So off we go, into the woods. Surprisingly easy to see. It was a full moon. Beep! My watch chimed as it turns midnight. Ah, happy Halloween. She says, it dawns on me. I'm walking through the woods on Halloween at night during a full moon. Every time I watch a movie and someone does something dumb like that, I always think no one would be that stupid to do it in real life. Didn't get murderer, but I've never power walked so hard in my life.